What's going on, everyone? How are you doing? We're getting ourselves straight into a game right now. This is, uh, at the time of recording, this is very live on the ranked ladder right now. And the reason I wanted to show this game, I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. I haven't even watched this game back. Uh, might not even make it anywhere. It might be a terrible game. <laughs> Who knows? But I'm, I'm uh, getting my hopes up a little bit because the main reason I wanted to show this game was we have Big Nagatoro, Pirashiki King himself, going up against the secret mystery Casper. Who is this guy? I have absolutely no idea. He's like already in the top 20. He's played about 80 games and he's lost very few. Um, I think he, I just saw he lost, I think he's only lost about 10 or 12 games and he's won about 19. Fun fact though, two of his losses were to me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just wanted to, wanted to do a little uh, show off there. But anyways. Uh, the main reason I wanted to see this game was because this, it's not its not a matchup you see very often because not many people play Hauser. But for any, anyone who doesn't know, this is a very, very, let's say weak matchup for Hauser. Hauser struggle immensely in this matchup. Two Falconet slash Rodolero spam is very, very difficult for Hauser to deal with. Especially early, you know, with that, how early Spain can do that fortress build. So I'm, I'm interested to see how Nagator is going to deal with this because I've played this matchup as Spain quite a few times against top Hauser players like Dennis. And even though Dennis is an amazing player, it feels like not, I don't want to say easy, but it, it, I, I'm pretty sure like I've wiped the floor with any Hauser um, player ever when I've been Spain. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of that Otto Russia matchup where Russia, it just feels impossible for Russia. But I don't think it's quite that bad, but it's still a very, very weak matchup. And that's a, but I have to say, I have to say that is one of Hauser's only weak matchups because outside of the Spain matchup, they don't have that, they don't have many weak matchups at all because Hauser are an Africa Civ. So essentially, they're a very, very strong civilization. I did a tier list recently where I put them in sort of the bottom of S tier, but still in S tier just because of how strong I think they are. So he's going to be picking up 70 wood here. Very, very nice. Um, he's going to be shipping three villagers. Pretty standard. Interesting that Spain have gone for this middle TP first. Uh, might be something to do with the trade line and how quickly you get XP. But um, I think you get you can get the first round here. So maybe it's to do with taking map control or denying this TP from uh, his opponent. Who knows? Who knows what's going in this Smurf's, inside this Smurf's head? Okay, let's have a look at some of the decks then. Whilst uh, age one is still underway. Hauser. Uh, yeah, free vills. Hauser kingdom. Pretty standard. Interesting he has uh, Sudanese allies. Uh, oh, interesting. does have spice trade as well. You've got the Anima card there. Um, a palace of Amina. Uh, and then pretty much pretty standard after that. He does obviously likes these Sudanese allies. The Fidi Knights and, and Raiders ride faster. So he's got... Uh, Durba Parade. You don't see that card very often. Interesting. So probably late game likes to go for the uh, the, the Lafidi Raider kind of heavy uh, cav comp, which is a uh, Hauser's kind of speciality. Is aging up now quite slowly. Um, probably will go for Hauser Kingdom. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, let's go have a look at Casper. He's he, That's also quite a late age up, I think. Is that a late age up? Uh, maybe that's pretty standard, actually. He has gone for 16 vils, so it was quite late. At least three minutes, just over three minutes. Uh, let's have a look, see what he's going to do here. Let's have a look at his deck as well. Uh, interesting, he has the uh, Reconquista card. Um, not sure why he'd have that if you don't have a big age two. But, I mean, he could play age two. He could play age two with that deck. But uh, without House of Trastamara, you need House of Trastamara there. Um, not the best deck I've ever seen. But, you know, it seems pretty standard. I mean, you could do anything with this. You could age two, semi-age two play. You can age three play. You still got some eco options with the Spanish gold, and you can age four. He's got the seven hazards in case he wants to go for the revolt as well. So, yeah, I really don't know who this guy is. Um, he plays a lot of the Euro sieves, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens this game. Um, let's see what his first card's going to be. Let's have a look at Nagator. Is he shipping Hausen Kingdom? He isn't. He hasn't gone for TP either. He's putting his first university down. So, you know, Hauser Kingdom doesn't have to be used into age two. It can be used into age three. Obviously, the later the age, the uh, the more benefit you're going to get out of it. So maybe um, maybe he'll, that's what he's, uh, he's intending to do. Age up's coming in, and Palace of Amina is going to be the first card. That's uh, pretty standard with the university. 
Gives it that palace, gives it that bonus. It's next to the TC. Is getting the TP down as well. So this university is going to have a maximum amount of bonus influence. You see, look, the line for this university, the circumference here is just, just in line with this TP here. So he's going to get that bonus. It's definitely in range of the TC. And then the palace, no doubt, will go around here. And so the influence, the amount of bonus influence that he will get will be at the absolute maximum. Currently, it's 1.5. Now it's 1.85. And I think it gets another 0.5 with this, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but we'll see what his second card is going to be. Casper uh, is shipping. What's his first card going to be? 700 gold. Straight into 700 wood. So very, very standard here. He's on 18 villagers. Might see five five villagers next because he has gone for a TP in transition. So he's got that extra XP uh, kind of generation coming in now. So what's he going to decide is with that extra shipment that he gets early on? Is he going to decide to go for five vil or is he going to decide to use it for something else in age three? Nice age up time though for Spain. Pretty decent age up time there. All things considered. Four raiders coming out for Nagatoro. I'm not sure what the age up was there. Um, oh, okay. It's the uh, he went for the Berber age up. Interesting. So that's the very eco heavy one. So with the Palace of Amina, you see here he's uh, he's stacking up all of these Berber nomads, and he's uh, produced four raiders himself. Um, so that raiders did a, a nice amount of damage, but it wasn't going to do that much damage because these were only foundations. Does manage to find a villager all the way out here though. He's going to be happy with that. We'll also be able to pick up this Explorer, but I imagine the Explorer is probably building dogs right now. Yes, there it is. Is he going to decide to continue? He is. He'll lose probably two Raiders for it. I'm not sure if that was worth it. I think just baiting baiting the Explorer there before it had the opportunity to make dogs, I think, uh, you know, wasting all of those dogs, all of that resource on those dogs would have been worth it there. So the Berbers, where are the Berbers getting produced from? Uh, the Berbers are getting produced from this native embassy, which is a free wagon you get upon this age up. And uh, essentially, yeah, you can you they cost the they cost um, the influence, um, but yeah, he's got enough generation coming in now with that max influence. This is now at 0 0.26, sorry, 2.6, and the palace gave 0.75, not 0.5, like I said. So look at all of them juicy extra bonuses of influence incoming in there. Two raiders still being annoying here. Snares has come in now, and look at this! Wow, look at this! The age three is coming, and he aged up with crossbows. Interesting. Instead of hazards, that is a weird one. But he's made some musketeers as well. So this is where his base is, the base of operations. But this, it, it leaves the, his town center very open to being raided. So more raiders coming in here. And it looks like Nagator is going to decide to stay in age two to try and deal with this, which I think is, uh, you know, is, is fair enough. Um, now he's got all of the Berber nomads. He's on 27 villagers with what five of them being um, Berbers, which are slightly better than normal villagers. So that's that's really nice. Uh, he's gonna now making Berber camel riders with the influence he has. So essentially like double, triple raxing right now, um, which is interesting. And look at this, look at this. He's very weak at the moment. He's got veteran musketeers instead of another batch of them. And look at all the cav out of nowhere. What is this? This is the African Civ special, baby. He's having to back his falconets up. And if Nagatoro sees that, that could have been dangerous. We've even got some Fulanis coming out of nowhere, dealing with these musketeers. He's going to be killing an explorer once again. And just like that, now looking really good for Nagatoro. I'm not sure what Casper was doing, but maybe he didn't expect the age two play there. Wow, were we wow. Now with 700 influence, not sure what he's going to decide to spend with that. He has the option of going for uh, Griots. Uh, with the influence, he could just make more Berber, nomad, uh, Berber Camel Riders, which I think would be pretty decent. Um, other than that, the only really, the only thing else he could get is Magadize. But Magadize aren't that helpful here. Um, they're good against Musketeers and, and Lancers and stuff. But um, I think Berber uh, Camel Riders are definitely more effective here. But look at this. There's not that. The, the Rodoleros are not protecting these Falconets. And Nagatora has an opportunity here. But he wasn't so. He was sleeping on the job. How many times do I say never sleep on the job? And if he reacted three or four seconds quicker there, which he could have done, he probably could have sniped two Falconets there, at least done some damage to them. 
but well played by Casper there. Now just going to be sending a few of them to raid, and this is really good. Just to, look at this, just to disrupt his eco. But if he if he kills villagers, that's just a massive bonus on top of it. Looks like he's going to maybe kill one, maybe get two. Oh, almost gets two. And look at these guys. Just They're so cheap, but so frustrating to deal with. I mean, they're not called raiders for nothing. And look at this, having to split his Rodoleros in base and just makes the APM very difficult to deal with. And that gives Nagator an opening um, to kind of pounce on his opponent when he's not fully paying attention. Look, gonna have to gonna have to leave a few Rodoleros back to his base as well. So just already, just because of the threat of the raid, um, is gonna is gonna cause you know that emotional damage. Um, for his opponent to have to force to send units back, which is going to weaken his main army, which again is going to allow Nagatori to try and win this battle here more effectively. But he's going to run those raiders into the Rodoleros. So just negate everything I just said because it was well worth it. More Berbers coming in. Oh, don't know if he's going to actually get these built. No, that's going to go down. Unfortunately, doesn't get... Oh, no, wait. Is it going to get built? Oh, split second before those extra two Berbers came in. He can rebuild them from here. I'm not sure if he realizes that. I'm sure he does, but he's not rebuilding them. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe just, just start making Bosniaks when you age up. I think that would probably be more effective. Or make some Akans as well. Uh, that would be a good thing to do. Um, or, or just use the influence for Sudanese allies. That's absolutely cool too. You know, that's absolutely cool too. So now he has a timing with the Sudanese. So he wants to wait for them, definitely. Maneuvering himself in a position, ready to pounce. TC Fire is on this TC, uh, on this Falconet. Got some very, very vulnerable villagers over there. And what's he doing? He's getting the elite ranged warriors. So he's going for his Falani ups first. Now he's going for the university. This is like the main kind of eco source from him. His explorer gets revived. The Sudanese are two thirds of the way there. This is going to be the timing. The Fulani up is almost there. We're going to have a delicious timing. One Falconet is almost down just from TC fire. So just because he's been waiting this long, almost one Falconet is almost taken out already. And now in comes the flank, but Kasper is ready for it. He's unpacked. But all the, just, oh no, what happened? I think the Raiders could have got in there. But he's, he's Kasper's moved himself into a fantastic position there. He's trying to come with the rear flank with the Berbers. Falani's, Sudanese, everything's going in now. Look at this. this just because of the flank, he's splitting all of this army. Is it going to be enough, though, to deal with that Falconet? No, the Raiders were so close yet so far. Oh, dearie me. The Berbers are still getting chased by Rodoleros. He had an opportunity to take the Falconet down, but he missed it. Oh, it was such a perfect flank as well, splitting the Spanish army. And now that one Falconet, even one Falconet, very difficult to deal with. And the university, the icing on the cake goes down. We've got some Lancers in here. Berbers do well versus them, but they don't do well versus Rodoleros. The Rodoleros are the problem at the moment. He's got the Sudanese, which do a lot of damage to Rodoleros. But there's just, it's just not enough of them. Javelin Rider's coming in, but Javelin Rider's popping out a terrible place. I think there's just enough of them to deal with everything here. They trade relatively well versus Musketeers. They are very weak. So look at that, a double kill from just from a Falconet shot. Javelin Riders, they do have um, range resist, they, so they, they get absolutely destroyed by Rodoleros. Look at this, just one or two Rodoleros being a nuisance. And he manages to clean up, but at what cost did it come? He loses everything. His university, his palace. He keeps his TC. He keeps one barracks alive. Is it enough to keep himself in the game? We will see. And what a game this has turned out to be. God damn, I'm glad I clicked on this one. Nagatoro never misses, baby. He does have a livestock with with three goats still. So, you know, there's like, what, 300 food, uh, 300 gold, sorry, 200 wood worth here. You know, so he's still got that option. Uh, you know, definitely worth getting, probably selling a goat there, getting another rax down. And uh, yeah, then just paying everyone on food. He's got plenty of resources left to uh, start, start, start producing units.
Nice Rodolero raids coming in. Picking up a Berber Nomad there. Very, very nice. Rodolero is going to be picking up a villager. She just wants to build a granary. The poor girl. And you slaughtered her. You just scratched us up. Oh God, any opportunity I get to put a, uh, a sharp quote in there, I will. Damn, what's going up here as well? Rodolero's catching a fort, but the fort, it goes down just in time. Now popping Fulani's there as well. Really, really nice play there by Nagatoro. Rodolero's, they are veteran. They're trying to do something here. But it looks like he secures this side of the map. Not only is that going to hold these resources for himself, it's going to give him a very good vantage point to start raiding from as well. This isn't as well guarded, and I think Spain is going to know that. So Nagatoro looking pretty good. He's on 32 vils. Let's go have a look over at Casper because I've been hogging the limelight. Rodolero, two more Falconets coming in. With pure Rodoleros. Pure Rod Falconet is actually a really good build versus versus uh, uh versus I'll say both the Africans versus Hauser. Hauser will get to the will get to a point where they can actually build culverins from these these forts, but they've got to generate enough um, influence for it. So are we going to reach that position? Raid is going to raid. They are their namesake. More Falconets coming in. Gunners Quadrant coming in. That's going to help with the line of sight, I believe. And uh, if you take a look at Casper, let's have a look at this line of sight when this Gunners Quadrant comes in. Boom, look at that. Look at that extra bit of line of sight. It might not look a lot, but it, it makes all the difference in those kind of artillery versus artillery wars. Or, you know, seeing when cavalry are diving in, it gives you an opportunity to reposition your units better. So Gunner's Quadrant is definitely an underrated tech. Couldn't quite squeeze out another two Falconets there, but does get another one. Stable trying to go down for Casper as well. No, he's finding a villager there. Finding villagers over here. He might not be able to kill that many before the rods get there, but again, it's just disrupting the eco from Spain. Raiders, not called Raiders again for nothing, and he finds another villager, but stop sleeping, Nagatoro. Don't get too greedy. He now has the elite tech for them. Lancers diving in. Where are they going to try and go? To the main base, and we've got, again, Raiders raiding. Falconets falconetting. But Javelin Riders is a nice play, actually. I mean, well, it is and it isn't because they, they'll do well. If they can get onto Falconets, they'll do well. I think they might have bonuses versus artillery. They do. Like, they have 2.5 bonus versus artillery. The problem is the Rodoleros. The Rodoleros can just die forward. But, however, that does allow for rear flanks to come in. But at the moment, all of his uh, raiders are raiding rather than flanking. Nice villager pool coming in. And look at these girls and boys punching away. Punching at raw steel, baby. They are fists of fury. Punching just hard wooden and metal. God, those 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 boys and girls have been uh, been doing some kickboxing lessons. I tell you that. They have been watching some AJ and Tyson Fury. Punching raw cold steel. Finding two villagers over here, and look at all the raiders everywhere. Now this is this is where this kind of APM raid. It's like Germany right now. Just that APM out APM in your opponent. And look at the scores. Very, very close. Slightly in favor for Nagatoro. He's on 28 bills. He does have Spanish gold, though. Interesting. He could be shipping a Reconquista card, which would probably be quite good right now. Raiders. Some Raiders going to get picked up. But again, they do a fantastic job of killing the, uh, the opponent's eco here. Five Hazars coming in for Spain. He doesn't really have any other options. He could send some Rodolero, he could send Archaic Infantry hit points, or even five Villagers. Uh, that card's still okay. Reconquista's still a decent card. Lancers trying to do raiding, but Lancers aren't known for their raiding, and they were going to get cleaned up by the Javelin Riders. Do not waste your Lancers like that, Sunshine. Another fort going down. Again, another great vantage point to apply pressure to the natural resources on this side of the map as well. Wow, that fort went down somehow. I missed that, but it's going to get rebuilt. Ooh, 
all plentiful tokens of influence. So 29 bills for Casper, 34 for Nagatoro. Actually building Falconets of his own. And that looks like that's what that thousand influence card is for. That's, uh, I think, a Falconet cost or uh, Anna Colvin cost 500 uh, influence to make. So essentially, that can be converted to a two Falconet card there. So if he gets the population for it, yeah, look at that. Three Falconets coming in. That's going to be beautiful. Raiding going on the north side of the map here. Hazars, they're going to do some work. But if Nagatori wakes up, he will realize that he can just put them, these villagers inside the fort. But he's going to lose a few. It doesn't look like he's paying attention because he's paying attention here to these Falconets. And who can blame him? Javelin Ride is going in for it, but he's going to lose a lot of villagers here. Oh my god, it's this game is back and forward. Now what Laros are on the cabaret. I can't keep up with all of this. What a high pass game. And look at that. He probably lo he lost. He's down to 32 villagers. He lost a fair few. And look at that. Even the explorer trying to snare this Falconet. The Falconet, no, unpacking again. That looks like that was a huge mistake. Oh no. Two Falconets still alive, and that's either going to force Casper to overmake Falconets, which I don't think he, he can do right now, or he's going to have to make Culverin. So, yeah, that, that slows down his tempo. Wow, but Griot's getting made. And look at this. Hazard's nothing to protect these Griots, these poor Griots. I say poor Griots, but how trolly are they? Smacking them with their didgeridoos. And I tell you what. My ears are going to be happy that most of those Griots went down, but those Griots are pretty expensive. Even have, even making some levied spearmen there from the house, um, in case anyone doesn't know, these are kind of like their Minutemen version, but they're very expensive and they lose HP, so they're not very good. But desperate times call for desperate measures, just trying to make some pikemen um, to deal with those Hazars. So mainly pure musketeer right now. Nagator on 34 vils. He does have... Does he have a university... He doesn't. He hasn't re remade a university. So he's not going to have a strong uh, trickle of influence coming in. I'm not sure where any of his influence are going to be coming in from. Uh, a small amount from the livestock. But other than that, he hasn't got any trickles coming in. And that's looking like a nice force right now. Just javelin Rider is very, very good at this stage. And look at this. Rodolera is again raiding over this side of the map. Is there any weak villagers? He might. The Rodolera might kill one. Not quite, not quite, but again disrupting the eco. Falani Archer's coming in. We've still got a couple of Griots here. Two more Falconets coming in. And Casper won't know this, but he should be making Falconets. That is definitely the right play because um, his opponent is going to be very, it's very unlikely his opponent is going to be able to make any more Falconets than this for any time, any time soon at least. Oh, now making, starting to make Lefidi Knights. Nagatoro. Again, Rodolera is raiding. This game is so hype, and you can tell why these guys are like top 20 players. Because they are just constantly trying to outraid one another, trying out APM actions per minute. Their opponent just, just trying to out micro their opponent. This is a really fantastic game. What an absolute gold mine we stumbled upon this game. Another Falconet coming in. Score starting to look good for Nagatoro, but if these two Falconets go down relatively quickly, there's a lot of Musketeers there. There's, there's, uh, I mean, Falconets do do an okay amount of damage versus Javelin Riders as well. So, uh, I mean, mixing a few Rodoleros, I would like to see a few Rodoleros here. And uh, there are Rodoleros, but they're raiding at the moment. But if, yeah, so if he can time all of this perfectly, although the score's good for Nagatoro, I feel like the composition, the army comp, from Spain is just better. 37 bills for Nagatoro. Casper is on 36 with Spanish gold. It's such a close game eco-wise. He takes the fort down. He's put himself in a really good vantage point with these Falconets as well. It's going to be very difficult for cavalry to get round here. He can't fight in an open, in a closed space like that. Nagatoro needs to bait him in. He needs to fight in an open area. Falcon, it's getting popped there as well. It looks like they're going to be able to run away. Rodolero is just running in for it. And unfortunately, these Falconets, really nice marker there. They get a pop off. But the Musketeers get in close. That's exactly where they want to be. But the, oh, the flank's coming in. But they need to be coming in from the right. 
or the top, but he's not going to get there. Uh, uh, but there's a lot of the feeding knights. I tell you what, there's a lot of the feeding knights, and some of them squeeze through the tiny little crack. And just like that, I think Casper knows. I mean, he could have he could have carried that fight out a little bit longer. I tell you what, uh, there's some more musketeers coming in here. Um, he doesn't have any more Rodoleros coming in, so it does look bad for Casper. But I think those Lafidi Knights there were going to do what they needed to do. And then after that, the Javelin Riders and Fulani were going to just clean up. But what an absolute fantastic game. Oh, God damn. That one was exciting. I enjoyed that one so much. Look at this. Using up almost every card in Age 3 for Casper. Nagatoro as well. Using lots and lots of cards. And I tell you what, that was a fantastic game. And like I said, a very difficult one for Hauser to win. But just goes to show there is no impossible matchup in this game, baby. There is no impossible matchup. And that's what I love about this game. Village account. Very good at the start with the Berber, with the Berber Nomad boom. Casper did catch up. And there was lots of look, lots of each other killing killing villagers everywhere, left, right, and center. Fantastic game. All resources gathered, slightly favored for Nagatoro. But it just came down to micro, really. What a fantastic game. Guys, I enjoyed that one. I know you're gonna enjoy that one. And I will catch you in the next game. Peace.